on May 2nd, 2024, Pluto stations retrograde and remains retrograde until October 11th or 12th, depending on your time zone. Today, we're going to cover the period in Aquarius. And in honor of that, I've got Timothy Glenn coming back for our round six of this Pluto series. So welcome, Timothy. Thank you. Yeah, wild times. <laughs> for sure. So you want to give a little overview of kind of where we're at just to contextualize everything in the bigger picture? Yeah, because we're dealing with the, the big quintuple transit of Pluto slowly working its way over that cusp between Capricorn and Aquarius. Going back and forth scouring that cusp. And so it came over once and went back and then came back again. And now as it stations retrograde, it's going to go back just for a, a brief moment <laughs> to this, this fall. And so get ready. This is going to be a wild one. So looking back to what's happening when Pluto stations retrograde on May 1st, we've got Venus exactly squaring Pluto from Taurus. So that's already pretty intense energies for what relationships, values, could be a good time for creative projects. But then on the second, we get that station. And then on the third, Neptune enters the 29th degree of Pisces, the home sign. So that's like a pretty loaded start to May. And then uh, moving on from there. So what are the highlights that you see between now and September 1st when Pluto moves back into Capricorn? Well, here in the U.S., I would expect it to be a really hot summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the political games are just going to be off the wall. But especially with Pluto, which deals with, you know, the death and rebirth cycles and so on and so forth, it has been analogized for the political situation in the states that this country is going to go through a near-death experience. Yeah. So this is going to be... Pretty intense because the uh, uh, the political climate is actually pretty insane. It's always been insane, but it's now up on the surface where it's really hard even for a lot of the so-called normies or muggles to, you know, it's hard for them to avoid it. Yeah. So this is part of, of what we call the Great Awakening. And so, so many people are becoming aware of the crazy stuff that's been going on and it's getting crazier as we go. And, you know, during that time here in the States, we're going to have both of these major political parties have their conventions. <laughs> that's going to be a wild show. Yeah. And that is one way that, that Pluto and Aquarius can play out, right? With Aquarius being the sign of the group. So no matter what group you're in, there is this kind of corruption coming to the surface, the hidden becoming more visible. So it doesn't really matter who you're aligned with. It's like everything's up for examination and the death and rebirth cycle. Yes. And too many people know too much for the old games to continue. Yeah. So it's going to be a wild ride. I'm really looking forward to it because it's it's a it's a fun show to watch. <laughs> Especially if you realize that traditionally here, both of those parties have been owned and operated by the same financial interests up at the top of that pyramid scheme. And uh, so much of that is coming to light. And it's going to be almost explosive and eruptive of how much information is going to be coming out, especially in the midst of this. Um, you know, we're going to have our good friend Jupiter entering a certain sign this mm -hmm. summer. Yeah. <laughs> And Mars is going to come in there, too. <laughs> yeah. So. And also, I mean, you had mentioned earlier before we started recording really about the U.S. is still finishing up the last bit of the U.S. Pluto return. And so especially that's going to become more apparent September until November 19th when Pluto's in that anoretic degree of Capricorn. But even so, it's still in orb. And then. The United States has so many placements in Gemini that Jupiter moving into Gemini, which happens on uh, May 25th. And of course, anything entering Gemini 
in this period is going to be trining Pluto in Aquarius. And so, I mean, that's harmonious, but you're still dealing with these heavyweight energies and also that expansion with Jupiter, right? Yeah. And Jupiter, as we have mentioned many times, Jupiter insists on truth. Yes. And you put Mars into the mix there. And, you know, of course, information. Gemini loves information, love, loves data. Mm -hmm. But uh, the information wars that we've been witnessing for decades here are coming up to the point where it's like, okay, this is ready to blow. It's going to be like volcanic here. So it'll be interesting to watch the, the timing with this. But since we have both Jupiter and Mars coming into Aquarius, yeah, they do try in the Pluto. And that's really a user-friendly aspect. So I will put uh, my bet on truth. Yeah. And and you, just to clarify for people, you meant Jupiter and uh, Mars moving into Gemini, right? Oh, Not what Aquarius. Did I, what did I you say? said Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm good. Aquarius fixation here. Yes. So, so yeah, Jupiter and Mars. And I think Mars enters Taurus on June 9th. And when does Mars enter uh, Gemini, do you have that date? Uh, 20th of uh, July. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. And then exactly trining Pluto on the 22nd of July. So lots of kind of these moves and it just seems like this progression of, it, it could be more optimistic energy, right? I mean, the April energies were just so crazy intense with that sun moon Chiron exactly to the minute conjunct eclipse. And then the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus with Mars involved from Pisces, the sextile. So lots of uh, increasing energies really all over the world, right? I mean, uh, Israel was impacted big time by that, uh, like a yod, right? <laughs> the, the pointing of the Mars, Jupiter, Uranus sextile pointing to their ascendant. And that was right when a lot of this World War III talk started coming up. So geopolitically, just tracking different countries, natal charts, it it's going to hit some places more intensely than others, but given how much the U.S. impacts the entire world, all these Gemini transits at the time that Pluto's in Aquarius are likely to pop off things everywhere. Yeah, that's going to be like popcorn. <laughs> it's like lots of stuff popping up all over the place here. So this is going to be a wild ride. And yeah, you're right. The uh, intense energies of April have just been off the chart. And the, uh, you know, I was thinking back to uh, 2022, we had on uh, the begin in bank beginning of August, I think it was on the first, when we had the North Node and Uranus right together at 18 degrees of course, and that very same day, Mars crossed yep. right over them. And we had talked about how that was really opening up a gateway for a positive shift to happen in the manipulative, predatory economic systems we've been dealing with. So uh, this one, one that just happened is a major trigger point that I've been waiting for. So we'll see how this plays out as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the so-called deep state, the, the dark side, whatever you want to call it, the people who've been controlling and manipulating for so long are at the end of their game. So what kind of desperation are they going to be in? What kind of moves are going to, they, you know, what are they going to try to do? Oh, but as David Icke once said, these people are nothing if not predictable. Yeah, there's not the creativity there. And that's the beauty of the Pluto and Aquarius energy, because Pluto, although we have the destructive energy, there's that creative destruction. You know, you're going to get something new with Pluto. And same thing with that Jupiter Uranus conjunction, something new is going to come from that. I had a lot of emergency requests for sessions and uh, lots of, you know, just texts and emails from people that I knew of crazy events that happened right around April 20th, especially for people that had any significant placement there, like the North Node or something like that. It seems like things are being brought up 
it's such a magnified level so that you just, you cannot ignore it anymore. And that's in Taurus. So that's like physical, tangible reality with Uranus, the surprise element. But then with that move of both Venus and Jupiter, Venus on, I think the 23rd and then Jupiter on the 25th back into Gemini, uh, we're talking more the information, right? The uh, the way that we understand the world and how we share that information. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of information coming to the fore because, yeah, it has with the buildup, you know, for not just months, but the last few years of stuff coming to the surface. It's been like effervescence. It just keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. But now it's going to be more like volcanic. <laughs> Whatever didn't get cleared in the buildup to this is going to come exploding out. Mm -hmm. But so, possibly in a, oh, go ahead. No, but that's for us personally as well, not just yeah. collective. So uh, talking more about that trine energy, it's supportive with the Gemini placements, especially Jupiter in Gemini, very expansive, but beginning with a bang of that trine to Pluto in Aquarius. So that is a supportive energy for getting out the big Jupiter information, Gemini, uh, in unusual ways with, with Pluto in Aquarius. So it, it could come as information, but it could also come, I think, as deep dreams, uh, life bringing up the symbols, but bringing that up in a collective kind of way with a, Aquarius energy. What are you anticipating in addition to the political sphere? You uh, mentioned symbols and uh, Confucius supposedly said that the world is not governed by words nor laws, but by signs and symbols. And so we'll have a lot of symbols coming up within ourselves and also in the collective, but also then people will be able to see through the symbology that's been used by the old controllers. Because mm. that we grew up in the midst of this. And so a lot of this is going to come up and we'll see where we've had symbols within ourselves that uh, weren't really user-friendly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so... But also with the with the trine energy being so positive and supportive, you know, even with good old Pluto, uh, the death and rebirth. Well, the rebirth is always more magnificent than what had been there before. And so I can see the possibility here for not a violent revolution, but a peaceful evolution. Mm -hmm. So I'll vote yes on that one. Yeah. Um, so any points of tension that you want to mention we've mentioned some of the good qualities of the trines but uh, i know june 11th mars and taurus exactly square pluto and aquarius so mars will be moving into gemini but before we get that positive trine energy we're going to have that square energy what would you be anticipating around then like power plays or um, potent, more potential for war, but not necessarily actually going to war. I see a lot of saber rattling that's going to be on a scale that they haven't done before because they're really trying to get us into the um, World War Three and all this nonsense that the, the human collective just isn't going to put up with it. And of course, the planet herself is not going to put up with it. So, um, you know, we're also coming up to uh, some retrogrades of the outer planets here. That'll be interesting, too. So, the uh, yeah, it's like th this year, uh, back last time we talked, it's like the, the astrology for 2024 is relentless. Yeah. We just look at things here and there and we go, well, like every time we're turning around, ooh, like, okay, we can talk about the uh, uh, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in... Taurus. Now, the last time they were together in Taurus was 1941. I mm. mm, think maybe there were some war drums being beaten then. Mm -hmm. But we've learned a little bit since then. <laughs> and so I don't see the response of the public to the, the war drums. Mm -hmm. I see people seeing more and more of this data coming out that really the same people profiteer from 
both sides in any conflict. Yeah. In fact, it's the same people funding both sides. So, uh, yeah, saber rattling, but I don't see it blowing up. Mm -hmm. Of course, your uh, mainstream, so called mainstream media, the legacy media will just be pounding those war drums. <laughs> but That's just not it. working. No, I don't see it happening. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either. Maybe isolated incidents trying to provoke that kind of activity, but especially maybe around that June 9th is when Mars enters Taurus and then June 11th, the exact square with Pluto, but Mars often does act early. So, you know, early June, we could see some of that energy, but it just feels like the tide has turned in many ways. And we've had this, you know, back and forth, back and forth over that Capricorn Aquarian cusp. And it just kind of feels like Aquarius is winning. <laughs> like the, the old, the old guard can't keep it up anymore. Yeah. And it's uh, such a brief passage there back into Capricorn here for Pluto this fall. And it'll be like the, the last ditch effort for the old Capricornian systems to try to do something. And uh, we did mention last time that uh, there's talk out there that the U.S. may not even have a presidential election. There would be that much stuff stirred up at that time. Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, it is interesting that on September 1st, the date that Pluto re-enters Capricorn, that's also the same date that Uranus Go stations retrograde. retrograde. Yeah. And so we've got this extra Uranian energy that comes into the mix on the exact same day that Pluto moves from Aquarius, Uranus's sign, back into Capricorn. So for me, that September 1st date is a big highlighted date of a lot of energy release potential. Yeah. And, you know, ultimately, the work of Uranus wants to liberate us. Mm -hmm. So as the ruler of Aquarius, yeah, OK, he's really helping to set things up to bring about what we've been calling it the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And that will definitely be a more peaceful time, much more cooperation rather than the combativeness among mm -hmm. people and nations, et cetera. Well, okay. and speaking of Uranus, we've got the U.S. natal Uranus right around eight degrees of Gemini, and then the U.S. descendant at 12 degrees of Gemini, U.S. Mars at 20 Gemini. So Jupiter is going to be impacting that. And I mean, that eight degrees Gemini for the U.S. natal Uranus is a little out of orb for Pluto in Aquarius, but it's still, I mean, if you do a wide orb, we're still kind of approaching that. And there is that, again, kind of liberating energy. It just, lots of times people are asking me like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? You know, there's all this crazy stuff, but it, if you pan out, it just looks like the energies are supporting liberation. As you said, we've got all this Uranian energy. We've got this Aquarian energy Pluto moving back into Capricorn, but it's the 29th degrees, you know, of that anoretic degree. So it's like Capricorn on steroids. But after all this kind of rabble rousing in Aquarius, I, I think the more you try to crack down once people are awake to what's going on, then the more ridiculous you seem. Yeah, and that's part of what will be exposed all the more as we go along. Uh, the old tricks won't work. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, yeah, the human race as a whole got fooled by this and fooled by that, but the same cards being played and the same games aren't going to work now. Besides, how brief is that uh, that stint in Capricorn this time? That's not a lot of time for them to whip up their energy and use that. Yeah, September 1st to November 19th. So, I mean, the election is in there and it'll be interesting to see how all that plays out. But I I just feel like the most obvious way of looking at this is the political landscape, but that's such a minefield right now. And it just, it's also just, it's become comical. It's become so such caricatures on, on all sides, just such extreme caricatures 
that I just see a lot of that exploding. What I'm also interested in, though, is how this is playing out on the micro level in in individual lives. And I don't know if you're seeing this, but I'm hearing from so many people that the manipulative people in personal lives are like those behaviors are getting even more extreme, but so extreme. It's like they they couldn't just be satisfied with where things were. They had to just push it that little extra bit. And again, it's it's waking people up and going, whoa, <laughs> I can't do this. I'm not dealing with this. This isn't me. And so I, I am seeing that kind of inner rebellion energy coming out in individuals as well as collectively. Are you finding that also? Yeah. It's like daily people are talking <laughs> about things that pushed them too far and where they used to acquiesce, they just drew a new line and said, that's it. No more. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting to see. And also more and more people are, are waking up to the games in the big system out there in the big picture, the political arena and all of that shtick. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting to watch people who are starting to see how cartoonish it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, What's the point? <laughs> so, but, you know, all the more it seems scripted. Yeah. And that's going to play out. And also the same forces that are driving that game out there are, are the same forces working in, inside of us. And so as more and more stuff comes out for us, okay, we can play picky choosy here. What do we feel like? Okay, this is part of, the real me that I'd like to keep. And in fact, I'd like to cultivate this and enhance this. And this other thing comes up and it's like, oh, well, that's some old matrix programming. Maybe we can clear that out. Let's let mm -hmm. it fade into the field. Yeah, and another thing that I'm hearing and sensing, and this is related to that, but it really came out in a dream that I had this morning. There were a couple parts to the dream, but just briefly, I was trying to help somebody. I was like following this woman around, trying to help her. I finally caught up to her and I was on a bridge with a bunch of other people and she jumped off the bridge and I grabbed her. I caught her hand and I couldn't pull her up by myself. And there's all these other people standing around. And I was like, uh, some help, please. You know, <laughs> what am I supposed to just stand here? And nobody would help me. And they they all just said, well, you should have thought of that before you did, before you tried to, you know, reach her. She made her choice. She jumped off the bridge. You should have let her jump. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable with that. And then the dream sort of fast forwarded to another scenario where I was with someone and it was kind of the same type of scenario. It was uh, a friend of mine who really wanted to jump into this huge swimming pool. It was an important part of her life path, but she was really hesitant to do it. And so I said, all right, I'll, I'll jump in with you in solidarity, but I wanted nothing to do with it. Like it was not my swimming pool. It wasn't my life path. I, I did not want to do it. I was just doing it because I felt obligated to assist. And so I jumped into the pool and we like bounced up and and were like way far away, climbed a ladder, got out. And there was a like a table there with a guy checking IDs and, you know, check mark, check mark. And we left. And then I turned around and they the guy would not let me back in. And I was like, but I left something in the pool. I got to I got to go get it. And he wouldn't let me pass. And again, it was the same thing. Well, you should have thought of that before you jumped into the pool. If you didn't want to go in the pool, then you shouldn't have jumped. And so the message that I took from that, and it's a message that's coming up a lot, is that we're not all going the same direction. And what's right for one person is not necessarily right for someone else. And it doesn't mean like you're a good person or a bad person, but this just might not be your path. And whereas before you could maybe be very permeable with those paths, the the message that I took was like, hey, be very careful. Don't jump into places. Don't reach out and try to change someone's decision just because you think that they should do something different and don't sacrifice your own path just because you feel obligated to, that this is a time where decisions actually matter and in some case are somewhat irrevocable. Okay, so uh, the word obligation comes into this yeah. quite a bit. Now, obligation, does that sound Capricornian or Aquarian? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, very Capricornian. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, so uh, well, I'll I'll go with the Aquarian energy on that one. <laughs> but uh, also, it's just honoring the choices that the other souls make. Mm -hmm. You know, ultimately, everybody and everything is the field. So mm -hmm. eventually, everybody wakes up to it, and it's not up to us to determine when, where, and how some other soul chooses their awakening. Right. Some might say, oh, okay, they wake up to a certain degree, go, I'm just going to hit the snooze bar. <laughs> just call me in 15 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. It doesn't even have to be this lifetime. Because yeah. as we know, infinity is kind of big. <laughs> kind <And> of big. <laughs> eternity is kind of long. And so maybe this infinite universe of universes could provide plenty of other opportunities for these souls to come into whatever this great awakening is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah. And when other souls opt to go back into the cosmic recycle bin, where's our position to judge them? Because how many times were we in the cosmic recycle bin? Yeah. Yeah. But I think also just that Aquarian energy of kind of being the freak show of the Zodiac, right? The, <laughs> like, you know, the crazy zany energy. Again, it, it doesn't have to be what's like, what's right for you may not be what's right for the group. And I do feel like with all this group energy of Aquarius, there's the, you know, the positive groups, but like, you know, coming together together that age of Aquarius energy, but there's also kind of the group pressure, that group peer pressure or the sense of the obligation from Capricorn. But yeah, where the energy's trending is Aquarius, even though we're not totally done with Capricorn yet, it's moving for Aquarius, you know, November 19th, it's in Aquarius for the long haul. And so also all that Uranian energy of 2024, that's you know, liberating energy. That's not that obligation kind of energy. Saturn's in Pisces. That's pretty weak for Saturn, right? Yeah. And the emphasis also with the energy that's uh, been played out with Jupiter in the midst of all this, you know, that wants expansion. Just to, Aquarius wants to expand. And we ourselves are expanding our own energy fields. We're expanding our own consciousness, et cetera. And so, yeah. In the old systems, yeah, we need to be more concerned with, gee, is this okay for the group, blah, 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 because there was limited time, energy, space, etc. Now it's going to be far more expansive, so there will be more space for us to do our own thing without rocking the boat, as it were, mm. of any of the mm -hmm. collectives. Mm -hmm. now, as, oh, oh, go ahead. Go. No, you go. As we uh, move into what we have been calling the new earth, those energies are going to be so different from what we've known in this old world. Our whole approach, instead of being fear-based, how about love-based? Mm -hmm. But maybe that would uh, shift things a little bit right there. Yeah. It's like uh, with you know basic mathematics or even stuff that's much more complex. If you change one variable in an equation, what did you just do? You change the whole change thing. The whole equation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm all for doing the big change and see what happens. And so, for a lot of us, as this is going on, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up and out of us. It'll be really explosive. You know, yeah. lots is going to erupt. And we'll come to realizations about ourselves and the environment that we live in, et cetera. But there we're at choice because we know if we're going to do the so called red pill thing, it may not be the easiest route. Because we are reprogramming. Because really, a lot of what we're doing is unlearning the old programming. Mm -hmm. Because that stuff is important to clear out. And that's a job that Pluto is real good at. Clearing out the old stuff so that the new can blossom mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I did want to get your take on today is Neptune moving into that 29th degree of Pisces. I mean, that's on the right, one hand... Yeah, this is the last full year of yeah. Neptune being in Pisces. Yeah. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Well, I mean, that that anoretic degree, again, kind of magnifying, right? Like last call and, and all of the exaggerated. So, I mean, on the one hand, you've got 
you know, mega deception, mega illusion, mega, oh, disillusionment with everything that you had put on a pedestal. But on the other hand, there's like the highest level of love and almost like fairy realm kind of energy just here on earth with, with that extra Neptune, extra just watery, fluid boundary kind of energy. So at the same time that I'm having those dreams like, okay, it really matters which uh, which path you're taking. There's also this other energy that's like, oh, but really it doesn't. <laughs> it's like, it's all swimming together. So how do you see the 29th degree Neptune energy impacting this retrograde period of Pluto in Aquarius? Because there, that's good. There's going to be some overlap there. Definitely. And you know, the Neptunian energy is often like one of those plastic Easter eggs where the <laughs> one's black and one's white. And uh, yeah, it can be like the super duper, you know, deception and manipulation from that and so forth. Yeah, confusion, illusion, delusion, and all that. Okay, but also that can take us to the depths of our spirituality. Mm -hmm. We are the soul. And to have this opportunity then... I see it playing out for a lot of us, especially individually, if we're, especially if we've been on this path for some time and we've got you know, some experience under our belt now, this is a greater opportunity to more fully embody the spirit. Mm -hmm. So eventually we get to the point that there's no thought of your higher self because you are the higher self fully expressed in the flesh as the human. Mm. So yeah, that beautiful. level of spirituality can really start coming through the you know, magnifying things on the other end of that Neptunian energy, which, yeah, at the highest level, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Get into that. It's like the music of the spheres. It's just, yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and and I'm anticipating, I mean, I'm already seeing this with a lot of clients and even just family members where the intuition is really starting to come online for a lot of people, even people that don't consider themselves particularly intuitive are finding that they're just much more tapped in in general. And I feel like there's a lot of transits that are kind of amplifying that right now. What, uh, what are you sensing as far as that? I would add to that empathy mm -hmm. because empathy is really strongly associated with that Neptunian Piscean energy. Mm -hmm. And with more empathy, you know, it's it's more difficult to do those dark, evil things, et cetera, you know, because if you can feel the pain you're causing, you realize ultimately we can't harm anyone else without harming ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you feel the pain that you're causing, et cetera. In fact, uh, you know, Harry Potter. Okay, I'll go, go into Harry Potter here. <laughs> Toward the end, uh, there was the final showdown of Voldemort and, and Harry Potter. And uh, and Voldemort had thrown out there that, you know, your hero, you know, Professor Dumbledore, you know, he had dabbled in the dark arts and so forth. Well, yeah, but there was something that saved him. And it's the same thing that saved Professor Snape, and that's remorse. Mm -hmm. So the trigger that really sent uh, Voldemort all over the edge there is Harry was inviting him to feel a little remorse mm -hmm. for what he had done. And in order to feel that, you need empathy. Mm -hmm. And so as we have the intuition coming out, we'll have more and more empathy. And and people often will ask, well, you know, don't you hate those people? Well, no. Well, at first, why would I waste my energy on that? But second of all, we realize that, yeah, okay, yeah, it's all one anyway. But, you know, to empathize with the people doing certain things, how uncomfortable do they have to be to be driven to do those things? Ooh, whoa. well, maybe a little compassion can come out there too. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that Neptunian energy can also be grief and and just, you know, there's remorse, but then there's also grief. So sometimes loss, opens people up. Yeah. And sometimes that remorse, it leads to a tremendous amount of grief when you realize, 
oh, this has been going on so long and I'm not always the good guy. <laughs> you know, I, I've messed up. I've gotten fooled sometimes also. And, you know, that when you look at that in yourself, it can make you more compassionate for other people. But all of this is playing out. And at the same time that this kind of enough is enough, no more, I'm not tolerating this oppression, this abuse anymore. You know, there's that Aquarian energy and Black Moon Lilith has been very active lately, very reactive <laughs> lately. So it's like all of it is in the same cosmic soup. And I guess for each person, it's going to be kind of moment by moment basis of where are you in, in your own healing? Where are these transits impacting your chart? And what level are you interacting on in terms of, of how are you going to respond? Because at, at any given moment, it's not just one influence. <laughs> Yeah, and it's an interesting mix here with uh, Saturn still in Pisces and Saturn. Yeah, and we do fun retrograde. That'll be interesting too. Anyway, oh, uh, and do you have a date for that? Yeah, Saturn uh, retrograde. Oh, June, June 29th. 20th, June, June 29th. 29th. That's right. Yeah. We already talked about it already. So, but uh, Saturn in Pisces as part of this whole unfoldment can help us draw new boundary lines because of the empathy and the feeling and the intuition within that Piscean energy field. So we see lots of that where people are actually taking themselves into consideration and realizing they've been the, the rescuer, the enabler, or you know, the champion of the powerless or whatever. And they do things like grab somebody when they're trying to jump off the bridge, <laughs> et cetera. That's just part of our programming. Mm -hmm. And Saturn can uh, restructure that for us. Yeah. Well, and also bring compassion for the self too. So, and, and that's where this is playing out so differently because there's kind of, you know, the service to self people by default where, where it's, you know, sociopathic and psychopathic, narcissistic, all that energy for those people having more empathy is a real necessary course correction. It's like, no, no, you got to do this. But then there's other people that have in some ways been enabling that behavior by just playing along with it and feeling too sorry for those people, giving too much uh, tolerance and empathy where it's allowing bad things to occur. You know, it's a, it's allowing a continuation of abuse. And so it again, I feel like this is very nuanced and it's it's not clear waters all the time just because it depends on kind of where you are on that scale and you may not be the same place on that scale with everybody in your life. And in certain relationships, you might be taking way more than you're giving and other ones you might be over giving. And one of the things that I'm noticing is that it's sort of like the double codependence where you're enabling somebody else to keep enabling someone else. And, and it's like the person that's that's doing the double enabling needs to pull back so that this person in the middle has to make their choice. Like, oh, I can't continue to do this anymore in this way. You either need to like step up and get your life together or I need to, you know, stop managing you to keep falling and being pulled out. Right. Oh, you're on a self-destructive path. Well, here, let me sweep the path for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got weird old programming in us. And I think we're all guilty of all that. You know, it's like, okay. But as this comes out, an important thing for us all to remember is there are no strict rules. Mm -hmm. It's like in each moment, what is spirit guiding you to do? And it's generally what is spirit guiding you to do, not what does your old unconscious programming tell you to do? Right, right. Because that's coming to the surface too. And we can start seeing more of that for what it is and what it's been. And that leads us to that whole paradigm where we're into the, the victim mode. And of course, you get the abuser and the victim and the, of course, the martyrdom and all that other stuff that has come with that. But we're done. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, that's the water going over the dam. Well, it's also North Node and Aries too. Oh, yeah. You know, Big taking time. responsibility for yourself. What do you need in order to move forward? And 
if you're truly recognizing how interconnected we all are, then there is importance in taking your next step. Because if, if that's, you know, that's what you were saying, that one thing changes the entire equation. You know, you, you change the whole thing by taking the step that you need to take. But sometimes that's really hard if you are someone that is habitually in empathy overload. Yeah, that's a, a minor detail. But one of the things that's coming up a lot on this theme is that uh, a lot of people are drawing these lines with uh, people who they realize now have been energy vampires all along. Mm -hmm. And you can feel them tugging on the energy and so forth. And, and they still play the same old games because that side of things, again, it's not creative. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's predictable programming. And it's like one of the old games is let's have you two fight. Mm -hmm. and so they get that stirred up and then they just put their straw in there and they suck on that energy as two people are fighting and so forth. But as people become more aware, more intuitive of what's actually going on, they realize, okay, it's time for new boundaries with some of these vampiric people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's some of that information coming out too. The Gemini transits will eventually be squaring the Pisces uh, planets there. And so you get that, you know, okay, this is the new information that's coming through versus kind of that muddled, confusing kind of information. And when you get that clarity, it doesn't necessarily feel great to begin with, but it it also doesn't mean that you have to just toss compassion out the window. It's just, it's more about finding a new balance, finding a new structure. That's like that productive square energy, right? Yeah. And uh, like with the uh, number nine, uh, all of our numerological cycles are one through nine. And the, the big keywords with the nine are compassion and detachment. Mm -hmm. And the idea is not to just harmonize them and balance them out, but get, get it integrated. Mm -hmm. Detached compassion, which we can translate as unconditional love. Mm -hmm. It can be the love that can look somebody else right in the eye and say, I understand you need some more cycles of learning at this level. Okay. Blessings on your journey. Mm -hmm. And so how do you advise people to sort of navigate this whole sort of cosmic soup of intense energies that we've got going on? Because it really is. It's all of 2024. And, you know, spoiler alert, 2025 is pretty intense, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're kind of in it, right? There's there's not, it's not like, oh, when are things going to go back to normal? They're not going back to normal. <laughs> well, normal was never normal. Right. <laughs> that was an illusion. <laughs> and so we come out of that illusion, but see all that so-called normal stuff that we had accepted before, very Capricornian, but also that was fear-based. Mm -hmm. So much of what we did was just rooted in fear. We don't want to lose this. We don't want this to happen, blah, blah, blah. Well, now we realize we have this field of infinite possibilities that we are part of. And why don't we tap into something that we choose to experience now? Mm -hmm. You know, giving your power away. Okay, we tried that one. How did it work out? Yeah. <laughs> Ready well, to graduate? <laughs> and and some of that I think too is is that Jupiter in Gemini energy, which is kind of party energy too. I mean, there's there's the truth element of Jupiter, truth and information, but there's also just this kind of jovial social kind of energy where. I feel like there there will be new friendships that form, new alliances that form. So yes, in some cases, you're walking away from people where it's clear that you're on different paths, at least for now. But that doesn't mean you have to be lonely. It, it feels like there is going to be more of this optimistic energy, even if things continue to get crazier. There is kind of like that, you know, girls just want to have fun energy or something like this kind of party uh what what floats your boat yeah and uh okay like 11th house with the alliances and the groups of people that we work with the, the dolphin pods we've been looking to swim with etc or the uh 
herd of horses to run with, etc. We're looking for that. And of course, what's the 11th sign? Aquarius. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we're opening up to find these, these cool new groups to work with because we are going into a new phase of our journey. And so the same old group was okay for then, but now we are moving into new groups because we're going into a different leg of the journey. And so it's just different group dynamics and it'll be fun. It's fun, you know, when you meet cool people <laughs> and things really work and they really click. Okay, that's great. Let's do more of that. And, and, and of course, then one of the things that really helps people connect is sharing their perspectives because we do love information. Mm -hmm. We love to have that, that Gemini energy stimulated because we can see all kinds of cool patterns and so forth. And yeah, we, sh we share that. And we, how many times have we heard, oh, find people who are like-minded. Mm -hmm. And so And you're it's thinking fun to hang out there with will be more of that? Oh yeah. So it'll be interesting to see when we've, especially with Mars and Jupiter together there in Gemini, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out collectively, but also within us. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of us will be uh, reinventing ourselves. Yeah, definitely. And, and Mars also being planet of action and passion too, again, with that kind of lighter, more fun energy. What, what attracts you? What, what's exciting to you rather than the slog, which April was kind of a slog for a lot of people, <laughs> but it, I do feel that energy shifting actually right around my birthday, especially uh, May 22nd in uh, it, it just feels like there's a shift when, when Venus enters Gemini followed so closely by Jupiter entering Gemini, trining Pluto, it just feels like, okay, we can exhale and, you know, inhale the new what's, what's happening. So, um, speaking of Venus on, uh, July 11th, that's when Venus enters Leo. And then on the 12th will be exactly opposite Pluto in Aquarius. And then on the 29th, we get Venus in Libra trining Pluto in Aquarius. How do you see the Venus Pluto energies playing out? Cause I think they're going to be amplified since we've got that Venus Pluto square right when, uh, right before Pluto stations retrograde. So to me, that's sort of says Venus, Venus is going to be important. Yeah, but she always puts the soft touch on things. Mm -hmm. And she also is creative. So that energy working with Pluto like that is encouraging a more positive direction of creating a more loving, caring reality mm -hmm. for ourselves, others around us. And that, of course, ends up affecting everything else because everything mm -hmm. affects everything, right? Yeah. Well, and, and values also with Venus, you know, personal values and creativity. And I feel like personal values are going to be undergoing a significant change with all of these energies, you know, dredging stuff up and creating the disillusion and then the new alliances and all of that. It just seems like values on a personal level, but also collective level are likely to undergo a substantial shift. Well, uh, what sign is associated with the valuables, hence the values? That's good old Taurus. And what kind of action has been happening in Taurus? And of course, it's still happening right now. Yeah, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Okay, let's get real. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but as people get real, you know, this energy is really moving them to determine what really matters, you know, for all of us to learn to reprioritize now because we had our priorities for dealing with the old world, which is falling apart. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to be, to be conscious co-creators of this new reality. And uh, Venus can help out significantly in that. Yeah. I, I like the idea of the soft touch. And so, yeah, another thing that I'm just hearing a lot from people is this discomfort with this period of limbo. And I think 2024 just is a period of limbo. And, but there's a lot of people that I, 
I feel and they are getting signs and dreams and all of that. And even, you know, trickle down effects in 3D reality where something new is coming. These new alliances, this sense of fresh creative energy, breakout energy, but it's like, it's not quite here yet. And I have a lot of people that are like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? What What is my job? What do I need to be doing? That's all Where world. am I supposed to be? And it's like, well, you're supposed to be in this ready stance because, you know, like have your knees bent, uh, don't lock your knees and, and just be able to pivot because while the world's going nuts, being able to reposition yourself, I think is one of the highest skills. And it's also, that's very Gemini energy. And in some ways, very, even though Aquarius is a fixed sign, it's, it's the weird fixed sign, right? It's, it's the sign that that's like, eh, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> so what and are, with, what are uh, you think? With Aquarius, uh, there can be just, it's a flip of a switch inside you. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Just boom, done. Okay. I'm done with that. Finish. Never mind. So, so it can be sudden and drastic. And that's really the influence that that has, especially with its ruler, Uranus. You know, when it comes around, well, it's like the lightning bolt. It wants to do sudden and drastic change. Do it at just the right time. Boom, get it done. Mm -hmm. Whereas Neptune is a lot different. Yeah. You know? Yeah, more like erosion. <laughs> it's yeah. like wearing it away, wearing it away. But that's where I, I do feel like this 29th degree Neptune energy is a... A big factor, maybe a subtle factor, because Neptune doesn't come out with the trumpet and the bullhorn, but <laughs> but it it just feels like, yeah, there's all this change. We have to change. I mean, life is changing, but with that 29th degree Neptune, there is that just, oh, you know, like a war of attrition where you're just like, okay, I've I've been worn down. I can let that go. It's not working anymore. And then that welcomes in this fresher creative energy that for many people is what their soul's been longing for since they incarnated. It's like, no, this is why we were born. This is why we're here coming up on, on this period of expansion. Yeah. That's why I like to focus on soul purpose. Mm -hmm. Because if we can get, get right with our purpose in coming into this life, well, that's going to help us navigate whatever water we're in. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, yeah, the whole game of, of get right with God or whatever you want to call it, it's like, yeah, okay, that's, again, priorities too. Mm -hmm. Because we tend to get tunnel vision and have our little desires and games we want to play and whatever, and we get fixated on these things. And now it's like, okay, this is all being phased out so we can let those things go open up what can there be you know if it's, it's like our imaginations have even been crippled because they tend to be based on things we've already known and experienced within this tiny little reality here it's like this infinitesimal thing called 3d life on planet earth it's like wow there's there's a universe out there. <laughs> There's a whole universe of universes. So uh, get ready to expand because that's what's happening anyway. Yeah. So Pluto, the destroyer of those limitations in many ways, we've got that Uranus energy, but also the Pluto energy, like what is it destroying? It seems like we've had the previews now in Aquarius and then that final round 29th degree of Capricorn you know, bring it all out, see, you know, show us what you got, all that top down authoritarian, you know, we're going to try to force our will on you, but good luck. You know, I, I just don't see it working. No, it's going to be more of a free flow reality for us now, which is more Piscean than mm -hmm. uh, Capricornian. So that's another thing with the Neptune being at 29 degrees as well. It's like, okay. We keep saying, go with the flow. <laughs> I've heard so many people say that. Well, you have to go with the flow. And they're talking about follow the matrix program. Yep. <laughs> That's not, you know. But we're going to start discovering what real flow can be for us. Right. Not the uh, redirected tributaries that are forced into dams, but more, <laughs> you know, where does this water really want to flow? And then 
The other thing that I track, as you know, are the lunar nodes. And so, I mean, we've we've moved from Taurus, kind of the nuts and bolts, physical reality, the values, all of that into Aries. We've, it's been in Aries now since July of last year. And then it's going to be moving into Pisces right around the time that Neptune's moving out of Pisces. And so it does just kind of feel like we have to get ourselves right, that Aries energy on a collective level, but get ourselves right. And then it moves into more of that dreamy, spiritual, compassionate energy of Pisces, because once you're clear of the vision, once you know, you've know you cleared out some of that mucky miasma of uh, you know foggy lenses and all of that, then you can afford to have that unconditional compassion again, because you're clear on uh, what you are bringing forth. You're, you're more clear of what your own path is. And so then you can just flow because now wherever you are is where you need to be. Yeah. And it's like trusting the universe, trusting your own spirit, et cetera, and understand that there are always greater forces at work, mm -hmm. you know, within us and with the collective as well. And if we just stop, and tune into it, we realize that what Pluto is destroying is just removing old blockages and things that have held us down and held us in limitation, et cetera, et cetera. And ultimately, we are moving to this next level of human evolution. This mm -hmm. is a whole new species we're ready to become. We're in the process of becoming. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so it's a beautiful unfoldment if we can just pan the camera back far enough <laughs> Mm -hmm. and see the, the bigger picture and see this process going on. And yeah, yeah, okay, a lot of the, the nitty-gritty details can be oh, a little uncomfortable. There can be a bit of friction here and there. Yeah, okay. But ultimately, we know where this is leading. And you know, when it comes right down to it, if you just tune in to just humans here, you know, the vast majority of humans whatever faults and foibles we might criticize or judge or whatever, they're basically nice folks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the human heart is going to win out. And those who've been doing the uncool and unkind things, well, they've been wounded. Mm -hmm. And there are opportunities here also to bring about the healing of the heart. Yeah, tremendous healing. And that was triggered by that eclipse, I think, uh, Sun, Moon, Chiron on the 8th. But that's, of course, playing out in the background of all of this as well. So, yeah, I, I guess just to leave people with the idea of things are probably going to stay fairly intense, but it's kind of like once you get used to that level of intensity, it also becomes a little easier and it could be more fun. <laughs> Uh, the Hopi prophecies say this could be a good time. <laughs> so <That's true. laughs> I, I feel like that's kind of what we're entering for this period from uh, May 2nd until September 1st is, yeah, a lot of stuff's going to come up, going to come up. Don't be surprised if, you know, a lot of your uh, things that you thought you had to hold firmly to are toppled over or destroyed or whatever. But there's there's a benevolent energy to that in the sense that what's being made, you know, what's being cleared the way for is is something very uplifting and expansive and positive. Yeah, because as things come up, it can even just be old memories. We haven't thought of those things in so long and it comes up and you can just realize, oh, well, that was uncomfortable. <laughs> OK, let it fade into the field. Mm hmm. Yeah. Ultimate oh, well. surrender and release. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, release. Well, Aquarius does that kind of stuff quite capably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, that seems like a good note to finish up on and we'll uh, catch up again for round seven when Pluto goes back into Capricorn for that final little foray into the 29th degree. Yeah, and, and we'll have uh, more clarity in, on the way it's, it's unfolding within ourselves and in the collective because we'll have gone through the crazy stuff with <laughs> with what we just talked about. Whew, yeah, so yeah. we're all going for a ride, kids. Here we go. <laughs>
buckle up. <laughs> or just let go. <laughs> yeah, buckle up or let go. <laughs> we wind up in the same place anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Cool. All right. Well, always great talking with you. Definitely. And how do people find you? Uh, soulpurposereadings.com. All right. Put that below. Until next time. Take care. All right. Thanks. Take care. <laughs>